here with Haven and Delight and today we're going to be doing something to clear up counter space. Now I used to absolutely love having my coffee mugs on this cute farmhouse uh, rack but with my new coffee maker and my adorable KitchenAid mixer that my hubby got me both of these, I want to have a little less clutter on the counter. So we devised a plan that we're going to try to hang um, some of these hooks from the counter. Maybe not these exact ones, but maybe something a little less heavy duty, something a little shorter. And we're going to hang them from underneath the cabinets. Um, and then the coffee mugs will hang from the hook by their handle, oh, that's not focusing. Um, so yeah, I just figured this is a super easy project and I figured I'd bring you along for the ride. So I'm headed out here to the garage to our scrap wood pile. We always try to save good pieces from um, our projects and hubby has them organized. And I'm gonna do a one by four for the project to um, hang my coffee mugs from underneath the counter. One by fours are usually less than one inch and it's pretty shallow underneath the counter so I think it will be a good um, thickness so that it can't be seen too much. Um, and I'm just gonna cut it down to the size I need. All right, sorry about my super messy garage, but I brought my um, piece of wood over to the miter saw. Now, this is one of the least scary saws. I used to be scared of it, but my husband taught me how to use it, and it's really easy, uh, especially for easy cuts um, that you need to do. The table saw is the one that scares me. I never use this by myself. I probably could, but it's just one of those things that... Um, I'll let my husband handle. But the miter saw, on the other hand, I can handle this myself. So I'm just gonna mark out the pieces and then I'll show you how to cut. Okay, so I figured I'd show you how to do this part too, just in case you don't know how. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it at the same time as filming it, but I have my tape measure laid out on my board. I want my piece, I want two 13 inch pieces. So when you are, um, Oops, sorry. Using the miter saw, when the blade goes down, you can kind of see that to mark it, it's easiest to see in the middle. If you measure it at the front of the board, right there, it wouldn't be easy to see. So my husband taught me to always put the measuring tape in the middle of the board and make the mark like in the middle so that when you bring the table saw or the miter saw down to mark where you're gonna cut, you'll be able to see it better. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, you see I put the mark in about the middle. So I'm gonna move this over. Obviously this is where the saw goes into so you can kind of eyeball it. And maybe that'll happen. Now, as you can see, I'm able to find the line pretty easily because it's in the middle and I need to move it over just a little bit. Anything to the left of your saw is going to be part of your cut. So you wanna make sure that you don't have anything too far to the right because that'll cut it short. So you wanna get real down here and measure the line with the blade and make sure that you're getting the exact cut you want by having the line to the left. Okay, so I made my cut. Honestly, it's super hard to do this while holding the camera and running the saw. So, as you can see, I took my own advice and I got exactly 13 inches, which my husband and I called dead nuts. So I got that dead nuts. Now I'm gonna do it again, because I need two pieces. Okay, I rarely ever look good when I'm doing shit around the house, so I am sorry for my shitty outfit and the way I look. But, 
got my second board marked. I wanted to show you how to use the, the miter saw. So I've got my thing marked. I'm putting it about where I think it's gonna go. This handle up here is where the trigger is. So what you wanna do is first, before you make the cut, you have to measure it. And remember, anything to the left of the blade is gonna be part of your cut. Always err on the side of, you know, having to make more than one cut just in case. So um, this isn't a super, um, this isn't a project that requires a ton of exactness, but here we are. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I think I've got it pretty good. I'm getting down and checking. Remember, you can always cut more off, but you can't add it back. So we're just gonna try to scooch her back a little bit. And then what you do is you see how the, the protector is on it. You have to bring her down. And then when you're right down here, pull the trigger. And then go through the board. And always make sure you let her go because the protector comes back up. And you've got your board. Okay, so we are back in my kitchen. I have cut the boards I've moved out the tree and now honestly I need to decide where I want to put these things as you can see this is a one by four and it is the exact depth of the counters so those are gonna fit really well up there. They're not the exact same color as the veneer, but that's okay. So I've decided which of my coffee mugs I'm gonna keep up here all the time. Um, I'm gonna have about four or five. And so I'm trying to figure out placement of the coffee mugs on um, the hooks and on the thing and um, I think I can get three on each one which is fine because I'm gonna have five or six of them or four to five of them um, so now I really just need to decide if I want to keep these two right here or if I want to move them right here or basically just the layout that I want um, for this side of the countertop and I went to my local hardware store and these were um, the basically the only ones that were there. I did have these ones, but they're too long. So I got these short guys and they're rated for 15, good Lord. They're rated for 15 pounds. So I think they should be good um, for one coffee mug. Okay, I got one of them done. What I did was I marked out where I wanted the holes to go and I made sure that the cups fit. And then I pre-drilled a hole as per my hubby's advice using a drill bit about a little bit smaller than the size of the hook so that it would still grab the wood but not uh, make too big of a hole. And then I screwed them in by hand. Okay, this project is done. All I used was one scrap piece of one by four and I cut it down to 
13 inches. I have two 13 inch boards and I bought some cup hooks from my local hardware store and I screwed those hooks into this board and then I screwed the board into the cabinets. These cabinets are pretty old. They were here when we moved in. We lived here eight years and I they have a lot of life left but I don't think a couple of holes in them is gonna uh, hurt the resale value of our house and it frees up counter space it makes it look a little bit less cluttered and it showcases all of my mugs um, whereas the cup tree that I had kind of hid the mugs it created a lot more clutter and now it'll be easier for me to clean up the counter um, I honestly clean the counter less than I probably should. Um, that's a dirty little secret of mine. I'm not the best deep cleaner of all, but look how cute this is. It shows off all my mugs. I am pretty happy with it. I think it's super cute and you can only see the wood if you, you know, get underneath eye level. I'm pretty short. This is about where I can see and you can't even tell. It just looks like a cutie little way to hang mugs. This took an afternoon to do, was not super hard, and I'm pretty sure anyone could do this. At our new house, I hope to have like a coffee bar area where I can showcase all my mugs a little bit and have my uh, coffee maker away from the regular counter. But in our cute little house right now, um, this will do. I hope this inspires you to find some unique ways to create uh, clutter-free spaces and to find the best organization spots for you and your house and just do things in a way that feels good for your space. Uh, this is Lorraine with Haven and Delight. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you soon. Gorgeous. Bye.